This is Doomtown Reloaded. It is an expandable card game about cowboys. Well, actually, it's a really good expandable card game about cowboys, and our review is two months late. That's because this is Android Netrunner, an expandable card game that's taken over my life in the last two years. If we open up the box, you won't even find the game, because all my cards are in binders, all my tokens have been replaced with custom acrylic ones. My decks, well, you can't see them because they're not in my house. Neither am I. I'm at my neighbor's house right now working on them. You want to see us play? Well, you can't. Every week we travel into town to do that. We go to this pub. And this is where I beat people. All of them, all the time. I just beat them. It's fine. I do. I, I actually, I do though. So it's fine. I do. No. Yeah, I, I do. All of them. Every, all of them. Every last one. All of, when was all the time. last time you... Let me... I even run my own tournament. This, this, this isn't the tournament. This is the stairs to my building because the tournaments tomorrow and the video has to go live today but we give out draft packs as prizes you know sometimes my point is that these games can take over lives netrun is the most i've played of any game since we started shut up and sit down easily edging out the original descent and that was a game that i played so much that all the miniatures took on personality like rune master thorn was senile and all the skeletons were sad so Here's what we're going to do. For the first bit of this video, we're going to review Doomtown just as a game you can buy. And then we're going to look at it as a culture for you to invest in and love as this game grows over the next few years or even the next decade. You ready for this? Let's go. So Doomtown is set in a town called Gamora in a setting that's been dubbed the Weird West. It diverts from our history in 1863 when a group of Native Americans to try and drive uh, European settlers from the continent perform a ritual that basically causes hell to start leaking into our world. I mean, I'm talking people using cars to commune with devils. I'm talking about preachers finding their miracles coming to life. And I'm talking about a material called ghost rock that's devil infused and powers weird steampunk contraptions. Now, what you, you and your friend are gonna be doing in this town that very much ain't big enough for both of you, you're gonna be controlling bandits or a cattle company or the worst circus ever or just sheriffs and you're gonna be playing dudes and deeds and in the process, a lot of men, women, dogs, horses and cast iron steampunk automatons are gonna get shot. I lit some tea lights because I thought it would be Wild Westy, but instead it just looks like I'm trying to seduce you. But we're gonna go with it anyway. So, in case you think I'm psyching you out, let me get this out of the way first. This is the best game I have ever played of showdowns at high noon and Wild Westy politicking. That said, while it's not complicated, it is more obtuse than taking a poop while sat upside down. It is more obtuse than tax return forms. It is more obtuse! than Android Netrunner. So just just give me like two minutes and you and I are gonna do our best to get through the rules explanation. A game of Doomtown is divided into days or rounds. In each one of those, you and your opponent are gonna have five cards and you're gonna alternate taking actions, a lot of which is gonna be playing those cards. There are four kinds of cards, each of which relate to a suit of playing cards. So spades are dudes you can hire, hearts are equipment you can give them, Diamonds are deeds that you can add to your side of the street. And finally, clubs are events, which may or may not take your turn or they might be conditional. Now, every deed, if you look closely here, it's gonna have a number in the chip and that's its control value. And then likewise, dudes have a red chip, which is their influence. And you win if you have more control than the other player has influence. Meaning, in a very thematic way, you gotta, you, I, I use thematic because if you don't use the word thematic, it's just a nightmare to remember. You can have all the deeds in town and that's great, but it won't mean anything. People won't think you're in control if there are tons of other people wandering around. So you can win loosely by having a ton of places that, are, that respect you or you can just murder all the other guys. You with me so far? Because this is where it gets tricky. When the game starts, there is a town square in between you. You each have your home locations 
And your dudes are actually in these locations. There's kind of a board element to Doomtown, and dudes can move around town. When I play a location, like I bring Pearly's Palace into the political game we're playing, your dudes can then actually move there. And if you have more influence there than I do, you take control of it, although you don't then get the income. So as you play locations, you're actually expanding the board. You're giving the game geography, just like in Netrunner with its servers. So that's cool. Except when you move someone around town, they, okay, let, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, a dude boots and can go anywhere. If you boot a dude, they can't be used again that day. Unless they are moving from your home space, in which case they can move to the town square or either of the two locations to the side of it without booting. And if you're in the town square, you can actually go anywhere on the board without booting. So if I move from the town square to one of your locations, that's great, maybe I control it, but that dude is then kind of stuck there. It's like a one-way ticket, you know, one-way street. A lot of people will tell you that Doomtown is like chess, and it is, you know, when you're moving people around and you're, you're kind of tying up people and you're creating walls and blocking other people, that's true. What they don't tell you is that if it is chess, it is chess where the board doesn't cohere to any kind of shape that exists in our reality because there are one-way trips, you know? Some spaces are adjacent to other spaces, but when you're in that space, it's not adjacent the way back. And it is just like laughably hard to get your head around. Just stick to that golden rule. Town square is adjacent to everything. Your home is adjacent to what's near it. Nothing else is adjacent and you'll be fine. I mean, it'll you won't be fine for as long as it takes you to... I mean, it'll take weeks of playing before you get that, your head around that rule and it's instinctive, but I don't know what to tell you, man. It's really tough. But if Doomtown is chess, then it's some kind of horrible prison rules variant where at any point somebody could flip the table and just beat the shit out of you. We arrive at the gory finale of Doomtown's rules, which is how shootouts work. So let's say Bobo the psychotic clown for an action calls out Sanford Taylor in the town square. I then have an option. I can run away and boot Sanford Taylor, and you've made him useless at no you know, cost to yourself, or I can stand up to you. And what happens then is you have to form a posse. Bobo is perhaps backed up with anyone else from adjacent locations, whatever adjacency means in this situation, who then can boot to move, or anyone in the same location can join in. I look at who I'm facing down, I can pull in other people, and then we do the thing. First off, we play any secret combat cards we were holding. Maybe I suddenly pistol whip one of your dudes. Maybe the sun's in one of my guy's eyes, whatever. But after that introduction, we do the dirty. What happens is I'm gonna take, I don't know what do the dirty means really. I think it might be a sex thing. We're each gonna take five cards off the top of our deck and maybe more or maybe drawing some and then discarding some depending on the combat value of the dudes. We're gonna try and make the best poker hand we can and then we reveal. And the difference between our hand ranks, and there are like 13 hand ranks in this game, is how many casualties the other person has to take. The difference between our hands. And this is where the game captures that dry lightning in a bottle of the Wild West setting, the tension and the horror of it all. Because even if you have an advantage, you can just still have all of your dudes aced in a shootout that you thought you could win anyway, which means, well, Let's talk about what that means. I actually like this combat system so much I wrote an entire article about it on Shut Up and Sit Down that I'll link in the video description, but so often combat in games is like this slow thing, you know, like I'll roll to hit and I'll roll to dodge and I'll roll for damage and bleh. It's like watching two cows try to push each other over with integers. No, combat in Doomtown is lightning fast and it is so painful just like it should be, especially in a Wild West, right? Because players know that while most fights, because of the way the, the maths of poker has worked, most fights will see someone losing a casualty. Most fights will go the way you expect, but you can't trust it. So you can't leave the fate of your game up to that, oh, all my dudes versus all your dudes. No, so it becomes, I'll hire a guy. Then your opponent gives another guy a gun, and then you buy a deed, and then your opponent moves towards that deed, and you wall it off and they move back. And it's like water building up on either side of these levees and you know that the levees are gonna break and someone's gonna drown. You better hope it's not you. And then when the combat actually comes, it's like, 
Okay, so like my favorite action sequence of all time is in The Good, the Bad and the Ugly, where the protagonists at the very end of the film arrive at the denouement and they know that two of them are going to die. And they don't know which ones. And it's like four minutes of them just looking at each other and sweating, knowing their lives are coming to an end and there's no way out of it. The actual shootout is like what? Like three or four seconds of screen time? That's what Doomtown offers. The only problem is it's not obvious. My friends over at Team Covenant describe Doomtown like a strong flavor, espresso or a stout, because it's something you need to acquire a taste for. And that's because your first few games of Doomtown will be over extremely quickly as someone thinks, well, surely I just push all my dudes at the other guy. And then you have to defend with all of your dudes and the game will end. And that's not your fault, you know? You'll need those games to learn why that's a bad idea to learn why it's the equivalent of showing up at a poker night and going all in on your first hand. You know, maybe you'll do well. You might not do as well as you would. And most importantly, that's not how you play poker. The deck building in this game is similarly odd, but brilliant when you get your head around it. You see, every card, of course, has what it does in the game and then its suit and value. So maybe you probably only need one railroad station and one telegraph office in your deck, but you're thinking, I can have two of each, and then I'll have more kings, and that'll go well with my horrible auto cattle feeders. I don't like pinned down as a card that much, but I have loads of sevens in this deck, so I could throw it in there and then get more, you know, pairs, more full houses, more four and five of a kind. Oh, it's a puzzle that's so good, it makes me feel a bit sick when I think about it. I might be making Doomtown sound more inevitable and cerebral than it perhaps is. I think some people are going to be put off by the fact that they have to be playing this game for like three hours before they even start to grasp how to play it properly. And I know that some of you also are going to be annoyed that even with all the clever maneuvering, there are still going to be games that you should have won where, you know, your full house gets wrecked by a surprise five of a kind. For me, that's fine. I think, as a card game, Lady Luck should spit in your coat from time to time. My criticism is that the fact that your win condition, which happens at the end of every day, is like my control versus your influence and your control versus my influence and every card has a different influence and control value printed on it, that's just so bitty. It's like accounting at the end of every turn that's constantly shifting. So I use the tokens in the game, it's like this is my opponent's influence, this is my control, this is, no, my, my opponent's control my influence, my control, and then as people die, you can chip those tokens away. As people can take control of your properties, you can slide the things over. It's not great, but I'll happily put up with it for this game. If you do have a few minor criticisms though, they should probably be overcome by how generous this box is. We've got bandits versus the circus on the table, and there's still enough cards to have a full cattle deck on the go, a full law dog deck, and then there's a ton of spare cards for you to get right into deck building if you're so inclined. So you could, with one set of Doomtown, be playing two games with four players concurrently. And of course, there's still that thing that this is a great two-player game that, if you want to go crazy, can go up to three, four, five players if you want. It'll be mad and take ages. Oh, and the, the manual also is accompanied by Getting to Know Gamora, Gamora. And that is walks you through a turn of the game no, like several turns of the game with what the players are thinking as well. A little column dedicated to their internal monologue. And that's great! Netrunner doesn't have that, and oh my god, it should! So, Shut Up and Sit Down categorically recommends Doomtown Reloaded. If y'all don't mind wrangling a few pesky rules, and now w w I'm gonna teach you, tell y'all whether, whether you should get into it as a hobby. So, is Doomtown better than Netrunner? You know what? I've got to say... No. Uh, look, I'm also not willing to go on the record as saying it's any worse. You know, these are both brilliant games. Both originally came out in the 90s. Both got a re-release, a great re-release this side of the millennium with new expandable business model rather than any of that booster pack, rare card, hoarding, randomized, money snuffling bullshit. The difference is, right, are that Netrunner, being the older game, has a huge, lovely, I can't say enough nice things about them, well-established community. Whereas if you play Doomtown, 
you'll probably have, you'll be the Wild West, you know, you'll be making your own. Maybe that, let that sway you one way or another. You know, to buy, to catch up with Netrunner at the minute, you're gonna have to drop like 320 pounds on expansions, and that's before you get into card sleeves and token replacement. You don't have to do that, obviously. Whereas Doomtown, being the newer game, has like two expansions. It would cost you 70 pounds. You know, let that sway you. Maybe you like Cowboys more than Cyber Boys. You know, let that sway you. Oh, I mean, who am I kidding? Probably the only sensible thing to do is to buy both core sets and see which one you like more. Though, on balance, taking into account the theme, the price, the community, the game itself, out of these two, shut up and sit down, would probably recommend... <sighs> I don't know. 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 Just for once, just make your own mind up. Okay? Okay? Well, so we're finished. We're done. You can. You can. You can go now. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. I want my objective opinion on which which game is better or I'm not leaving, alright? Well, Netrunner's better because it has a dinosaur that lives on the internet. Is that what you want?